Okay, we're going to talk about polar areas, and in this particular example, we're going to talk about a limason. A limason is a good example of a polar area problem, uh, namely because of the fact that it kind of doubles back on itself, so you have to be very careful when you're counting the area. Um, so if I were to plot this, um, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm dotting in the lines where r equals zero. I already know the general shape of the limason. Uh, if you don't really know how to graph in polar, polar areas are just almost impossible. Um, so I recommend you spend a little bit of time making sure that you can graph in polar because it lets you figure out all the bounds that you need. Um, so I've done that. What I'll do is I'm going to find where r equals 0, although I've already done that, um, 2 pi over 3, and at 4 pi over 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in some of the angles, so some of the thetas at which, uh, you know, the thetas where you end up at particular points on this graph. So you start here, that's actually at theta equals 0. Um, then this point right up here is theta equals pi over 2. The first time you hit this inner loop is at 2 pi over 3. That's really important. Um, that point right there is actually theta equals pi. You exit the inner loop at 4 pi over 3. So those are values you really need to know when you in enter the inner loop and when you get out of the inner loop. Um, and then we go all the way around. It takes 2 pi to finish the curve. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to find the area of the whole thing, so the entire thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find half of it and then double it, which is kind of my favorite thing to do for polar problems. Um, so if I start at 0 and I start tracing, so I'm filling in the area, I'm actually going to stop right when I first hit the inner loop. So if you believe what happened was when I actually uh, shot out the radius at theta equals 0, if you look at the bigger picture, it might be easier to see, um, I covered the area of the inner loop. So as I'm going from... Uh, really 0 to pi over 3, I'm actually counting the area of the inner loop already, so I don't want to double count it, so I have to stop at 2 pi over 3, because I'm, I will then have covered half of the entire region. So 0 to pi, 2 pi over 3 is what I want, so I'm going to double it, and then 1 half is a part of a polar area. The integral from 0, which is where I started, and I'm going to stop right before I hit the inner loop. So you got to know when you start an inner loop, so you know when to stop. And then it'll just be r, and then I'll square it, and then d theta. And then I'm just going to grab a calculator and figure that out. So that actually works out to 2 pi, and then plus 3 root 3 over 2. Um, there are other ways that I could have found this area. Um, so for example, what I could have done was that idea of uh, kind of backing up. So... I could have backed up to negative 2 pi over 3, started there, and then just kept tracing until I got to positive 2 pi over 3. And if I do that, then I'll get the entire area. I won't have double counted anything, and uh, I'll be done. So that would give me 1 half the integral from negative 2 pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. So if you're not really a fan of this whole doubling thing that I do all the time, then you kind of have to become a fan of backing up. So instead of starting at zero, you've got to figure out what happens at negative values of theta and go from there, which isn't a problem as long as you get good at it. And then we have the usual integrand, which is just r squared, and then d theta. So that's going to give me the entire area of the region. Um, another really common question is to find just the area of the inner loop. So if I want to find just the area of the inner loop, then what I'm going to have to do is know when I start the inner loop, when I stop the inner loop. But I already know that because I've talked about it quite a bit. So I have this picture. Oop, let me back that up. So I will redraw the picture for you. And picture, picture, picture. Taking a really long time. Okay, so if I start tracing it, that's my inner loop right there. So what I've done in this case is I started at 2 pi over 3, and I just kept tracing until I hit to 4 pi over 3. So if I do that, I get the entire thing in one shot. That's 2 pi over 3 is where I started. 4 pi over 3 is where I stopped. And then the usual integrand. Give me this. And that, again, I'm just going to use a calculator. If you were doing it by hand, you would again need the power reducing formula, though, because you can end up with a cosine squared in there. Um, so I get that, and I could have done that other ways, so two other ways come kind of immediately to mind. I could have done half of it, which would be 2 pi over 3 to pi, and then doubled it, 
And I also could have started halfway through, which would have meant starting at pi and going until 4 pi over 3, and then I would have had the usual integrand. Um, so those are two things that you commonly do. You find the entire area enclosed, uh, you find the area of the inner loop, and then another common question is to find the area between the loops, but that's just the entire area um, minus the inner loop. So by answering these two questions, we figured out how to answer that question as well. Um, and it's a little bit tricky, but if you know how to graph the polar curve, finding the area is not that big a deal. And I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.